All right, Jeff Kramer here again. We're going to do some deer hair fun. Uh, this is going to be a little guy. This is um, something kind of near and dear to my heart. I do a lot of panfish, bluegill, sunfish, uh, that kind of fishing back home. That's what we have. It's fun to do. Uh, deer hair doesn't have to just be for great big bass bugs. This is a size 12 Firehole 839, and this is going to be a basically a, a deer hair version of a sneaky peat. Uh, just a kind of a little triangular blockhead shaped uh, slider. The fish will love this one. It's fun to tie, fun to fish. Uh, stays pretty durable for a deer hair bug. Uh, it's tied on a barbless hook, so you don't have to wrestle with it too much to get it out of the fish, so these tend to, to hold up pretty well. Uh, thread for the rear part of this fly, I use 6 aught. Your color really does not matter. You're never going to see it. So this is just some rusty brown that I already had spooled up. Uh, the very first material we're going to tie in is going to be some Bruiser Blend, and this is in a dirty chartreuse color. So I will take this, this is the full length of the fiber, fold this over the thread, and we're going to kind of place this right over the, the hook point, and wrap back. And this is an important little thing for deer hair work that I've found, is that you create this little bump right here, and there's going to be kind of another one actually where the ice chenille gets tied in for this. Uh, it gives you just a little bit of a backstop. So when you go to, to press back over the hook to pack in hair, it's nice to have something solid that you're pressing against. So you didn't end up pushing this straight back over the bend of the hook. So that's way too long. I just like this to be a little nub of material sticking out. So I trim this pretty short. It's about half a, half a hook length. And our next material is going to be a strand of rubber legs per side that I'm going to tie onto the side of this material. And I love orange legs on bluegill bugs. They love chartreuse, they love yellow. Anything with black and yellow and chartreuse, this is gonna be a chartreuse in yellow. So I just fold that rubber leg over the, the thread and pin that right to the side over there. And we're gonna repeat that process on the far side of the hook. Fold our set of rubber legs right over the thread. Anchor that down, advance our thread back over. So you can see that we're creating a, a fairly good sized little bump of material right here that's going to help us when we go to pack that deer hair a little bit. So we're going to pull these rubber legs back and I like to make them just a little bit longer than that nub of bruiser blend. So our next material is going to go in. This is going to be some ice chenille and you could use also some Estaz or whatever version of this product you want to use. I love black for the kind of the collar portion of these flies. Like I said, yellow and black and chartreuse and black are probably the two colors I fish the most, or just all black. So we're going to tie in our ice chenille right over top of that little material and bump. And we're going to tie in one more set of rubber legs right in front of that bump. And we're going to have one set per side on this fly. So again, we're going to fold a rubber leg right over the thread, pin it right in place on the side of the fly, Give a couple more wraps to keep it there, and repeat the process on the opposite side. And usually you can, if you need to place these, if you don't give too many thread wraps over, you can kind of position these as, as you need to. This one wants to roll on me a little bit. And then we're going to spread these legs apart and advance our thread in front of those. And now we're going to wrap our ice chenille usually get at least two if not three wraps on the back side of these rubber legs and then I'm going to take the third wrap right through the middle of those rubber legs so it's going to help to split those rubber legs apart and then two more wraps in front of those legs so if you split those legs apart pull them back advance our ice chenille in front give two wraps and then we're going to pull this material up tie it off Give a couple wraps in front and go ahead and trim off our excess. Sometimes you'll have some fibers of that ice and you'll just kind of pop loose. Get that rubber leg untucked. So I will go ahead and wait to trim these rubber legs until after we get the deer hair tied in. So we're going to advance our thread just a little bit and whip finish because that's all we need the light thread for. We're going to switch to GSP for the deer hair portion. 
a little hack for working with deer hair on uh, bugs like this, especially the, an option you can do with this bug is you can add a little soft hackle wrap in front of this or just some regular, just some black saddle hackle through it just to add a little extra to the collar. Um, for me, I do this little protection. Uh, this is a chunk of freezer bag. This is just a, literally a chunk of old freezer bag material. It's kind of heavyweight plastic. I have a bad habit of trimming off these rubber legs when I go to shave a deer hair bug. So if I take a tiny chunk of this freezer bag material, pop a little hole in the middle, slide this up and over, and it butts right up against that ice chenille. Now I can go ahead and start my GSP in front of that. Sometimes it'll spin around a little bit if I get a little bit too close to it. We can kind of pull this back. And the cool thing is if you, any material you have in the back of this, your deer hair is going to go in the front. Any material that's behind that bag, when you go to trim this with a razor blade, you're going to have a very, very low chance of dinging it with the razor and cutting it. And then when you're done, all you have to do is just slit a little bit of a, a hole in the bottom of that bag, rip it apart, it'll come right out. You'll never know it was there. So our next material is going to be the deer hair. And this is chartreuse deer belly hair. The first clump of deer hair that's going to go on this fly, considering it's a size 12 bluegill fly, is going to be pretty large. And the reason for this is that I don't want to have to add multiple stacks to this. I just want to stick to one clump of hair to keep this as a pretty dense deer hair body. So you can see this is a pretty large clump of deer hair given that it's a size 12 bug. As always with deer hair, use a comb and try to get as much of the under fur and short fibers out of there as you can. It helps this stuff flare out and kind of get the most bang for your buck out of your hair. So you can see there's some of the under fur and junk that came out of that clump. So I've got this clump of deer hair just kind of by the butts in my fingers. We don't need all of these tips. So we're going to go ahead and trim these tips out. So this clump's going to end up being diameter wise, think kind of like the size of maybe a Sharpie or a, a highlighter. So you've got a pretty fair sized clump of hair there. I don't spin this on the shank. Uh, what I end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and lay this on top of the shank, give this two wraps. And right now this clump of deer hair is sitting right on top of the hook shank. If you wiggle and push down just a little bit, it's going to spread some of that deer hair onto the bottom of the hook. And now we'll go ahead and give that a good cinch. So what the point of that is and give two wraps through just to make sure that's anchored in good. I don't want a whole lot of deer hair on the bottom of this because this would be a tricky bug to trim a lot of hair off the belly. Uh, you want to make sure it's a small hook. You want to make sure you have enough of a hook gap to get the fish hooked. So I don't like to have too much hair on the bottom. And I just kind of do a little finger pack on this. I don't do a whole lot of extreme packing on this size of a bug because the amount of hair that you have tied in and then once you get it trimmed, uh, you're going to trim it pretty tight. The density of the hair that you've got tied in is usually enough to make it a pretty dense body. So we're going to use your fingers and pull those fibers back. Take your thread up in front of that clump of hair. And I always give at least one or two half hitches right in front of that clump of hair just in case anything has to be redone on a bug, it's good to have some fail safes in place. So once I get those half hitches in, I'm going to go ahead and advance my thread about a turn in front and give one more half hitch. And that's just going to kind of position my thread, if you can see right there. Position, positions my thread just a little bit in front of that clump of hair. It gives me just a little bit more room to work with. Now, if the first clump of hair that I tied in on that was the size of a Sharpie, the next clump, unfortunately, I don't like the pencils, uh, would probably be about the size of a pencil. It's going to be, the head of this fly is going to be trimmed a lot shorter than the, the rear of the fly. So I don't want to have way too much hair to the point that I can't get the thread cinched tight enough and I worry about dinging the thread when I go to trim the, the head of the fly. So the head is going to be trimmed very, very short on this one. And we're going to do the same process. We're going to go ahead and clean the shorts and the under fur out of that deer hair. And you can see this is a, a pretty much smaller clump of hair. It'll be the exact same process. I'm not going to spin it. I'm not really going to stack it. I'm just going to lay it on top of the shank. Give two wraps. 
of thread over the top of it. And again, we're just going to give it a little wiggle and let that hair just barely migrate around the bottom of the hook shank. Cinch down, give a good thread wrap through it. And this is the tricky part of finding your hook eye. And if usually if you feel, kind of shove your finger right into the tip, you can usually feel right about where the hook eye should be. Wiggle that back a little bit and voila, there's my hook eye. This is where a dead fly style packer tool like this comes in very handy. I don't use them so much for packing the hair, but I use them a lot for doing a half hitch right in front and right over that hook eye. So what I'm going to do is get my thread wrapped around this tool, push this right back over the hook eye, slide that half hitch right down onto the, right behind the eye of the hook, and I'll usually do three or four half hitches right behind the hook eye on this fly. Grab the hook eye and pull, make sure those are nice and tight. And then you can come in and trim your thread. So now is the fun part. We get to trim all of that deer hair off, or at least most of it off. Um, this is going to be done with a double edge razor blade. I know some people that like to trim deer hair bugs with scissors. I, in my opinion, you just can't get a, as good of a finish on a bug as you get with a blade. Um, some people are afraid of these. They are sharp. As long as you're careful and you hold them out here on the dull end, you're usually okay. Um, the first cut for this bug is going to go right below the hook eye, right on the, the hook point side of the hook eye and go straight back towards the hook point. And I'm going to go back until I basically hit that bag, which is not very far on this bug. Sometimes you got to work around that bag just a little bit to get all that hair trimmed out. You want this to be pretty flush on the bottom of this fly because that's going to open up your hook, hook gap a little bit and help you get uh, the fish hooked that actually eat this thing. So now we're going to rotate this over. So now the hook point is facing down. And my next cut is going to go from the hook eye up at about a 45 degree angle. And as a general obvious rule with deer hair, uh, go, go in small cuts. I'm not going to take this as far as I'm going to be taking it uh, in the first cut. I'm just going to make kind of a, a rough cut going up. And this is going to be a kind of a steep angle on this one, uh, the first cut, just because I don't want to fool around and cut too much off. So you can see there I've got an angled cut going up from the hook eye. And my next cuts are going to go from the hook eye out at about a 45 degree angle in this direction. And again, don't try to take it all at, on the first cut. That is a, a good recipe for disaster with deer hair. So as you can see, there's a lot of material still on here, uh, especially a lot sticking back over the tail material that we got tied in. Uh, so I'm going to take just a little bit first off of the top here. And once I get it to about that point, if you can roll this over where you can find your hook point, you're going to want to make it a cut straight down towards the hook shank. Uh, straight towards that plastic bag material just behind that bag. So you need to kind of know about where you started the deer hair so you know where to make this cut. And that hair will fall out. So that's how you're going to trim that excess hair out off of the sides. And a good way to be gentle with this cut um, is actually to, instead of pushing the blade straight down like that, if you just kind of rock the blade a little bit, you can get usually a pretty clean, pretty nice cut on that. So you can see that that head is starting to take shape now. We're getting a triangular slider style head. And typically once we get close to this point is a good time to trim out the bag, just because it's going to make it a little bit easier for you to get these last few cuts made. So when it comes to get this time to get this bag material out, you can insert your scissors down right to the base of that material and push. Get your scissors started into that plastic bag. 
maybe. And then just slice up. And now you can actually just take this plastic bag and pull gently on it. And that bag will pull right out. So now we've got just our material and our leftover deer hair. So now if we're tidying this head up a little bit, it's still pretty rough. I'm going to try to square off the, the back of it just a little bit. Sometimes it is a little bit helpful to take a pair of scissors and go over the back edges of this just to kind of round them off just a little bit. It's a little bit easier to do that part with a pair of scissors than it is with the blade. And then once it's, and we're still in a pretty rough position here, um, we're going to go ahead and take our blade and instead of bending the blade, I do keep it straight. I don't try to bend the blade like this. Um, I just like to go over and basically knock the hard edges off of this bug. Just take small amounts at a time. And you're going to round that up just a little bit. It's not going to make it a completely rounded head, but it is going to knock those angles off just a little bit, make it a little bit more streamlined. Just a little bit asymmetrical here. I'm going to take just a little bit more off of this side. As you can see there, we're getting that nice triangular, sneaky Pete diver style head shape. Uh, one of the last steps with the blade, and the reason I do this is one of the last steps is because it's a good way to dull your blade, is to go around the, the hook eye and just kind of push straight down behind the hook eye with your blade Try to clear out any little fibers that are sticking down right next to the hook eye that could interfere with you tying your tippet on. These blades do dull pretty quickly, so I typically just stick to one bug, one blade. So once this blade has been used on a bug, I will toss it. And you can spend as much time trimming on these as you would like. I try to spend as little time as possible, but I always end up spending more time than I think I should. Trim these rubber legs and then glue on some eyes. Once we get the fly back in the vise, uh, that's kind of a handy time to look over your trim job, and if you want to take any more off of this fly, you can. Take just a little more off the belly just to free up that hook gap just a little bit. So you can see there, even though this is a small fly with a deer hair head, you still got plenty of hook gap to stick Mr. Bluegill when he decides to eat this. Just a little bit more here. So now that we've got that finished trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and pull the rubber legs. Let's go ahead and draw them up and trim these to whatever length you want. I tend to trim them kind of short because I feel like any time I trim them really long that they usually just end up fouling around the hook point. So we will trim those out, make sure they're roughly symmetrical. Okay, so the last step before, and you could you could finish this, you could fish this bug as it is right now and it would fish just fine. I like to add a set of eyes to each side. And these are just a four millimeter 3D eye. I like red eyes on these. Uh, we're gonna give just a little dot of gel CA right to the side of that eye, the other side of the head, I'm sorry and then place the eye right on top of that little clump of gel CA. And the tricky part with this is not getting the, the eye stuck to your finger, which I have done more than once. And we're gonna repeat that process on the other side. The gel CA, I used to kind of countersink the eyes on most of these deer hair bugs, uh, but just using a little gel CA with a fairly flat sided head typically will hold these in place pretty well. I'm going to trim just a little bit more out right there with a pair of scissors. So there is a size 12 deer hair sneaky peat ready to fish.